All right, guys, we are going through over on Twitch an old, old video. Bad audio, bad mics, bad... Ah, just, just all the things. But we are all the way back in Stormblood, patch 4.57. Um, Crystal Data Center just came online. That guy over there without a man bun uh, has found himself playing on a PlayStation 4. Uh, and World Visit was just added. World Visit just went live um, back in spring of 2019. And so they are going through that. Um, we're talking about, like, Brian made a prediction in this video that Crystal Tower might become required content. Whoa. Uh, a feast season just started. So it's it's a bizarre time to think through pre-Shadowbringers. These guys had no idea what was coming. But it is time to talk about World Visit and will it wreck the economy. Um, the basics of kind of arbitrage is... is you know, arbitrage can be received as something like scalpers, where somebody is buying something for the purpose of making more money on it, but there was an able, willing, and ready buyer lined up, and so they are just adding cost to the market for no benefit to the original seller or the final buyer. Uh, and then there are people who are like collectors, where they buy something and they hold on to it for a period of time. Um, and so the act of arbitrage focuses more on that like instant transaction, uh, as opposed to that more... I provide a value either by changing that from like I bought a piece of wood to turn it into a chair or um, I held it for a period of time and now it is worth something more. And it is more prevalent when you talk about things like commodities as opposed to like bespoke individual solutions. So something like my individual Warhammer guys where each one might be totally unique and in their own way. These are two different things. And so it's not as obvious as if I just buy something where like a PlayStation 5, where it's the same as the next one and the next one and the next one, and they're providing value, not because of anything unique about that good, not because of, they're just providing value to providing value. Um, Final Fantasy system, the act of hopping the world, the act of now hopping data center does save somebody the trip. So it's not exactly the same as scalping. They're, they are providing a value, but the question is how much should that value be worth and will it will it wreck the markets? Will it ruin the economy um, of Final Fantasy 14, which is already kind of a weird concept because of the way Gil works within the game. But let's see what these 2019 guys have to say. You can always just easily download it and you're not gonna have uh, all of these little pain points of like, oh no, my hot bars. Oh no, I have to reset up everything. Definitely. Oh. oh, remember when they added these? This just moved out of beta. So he's if Brian's finishing telling us about backing up your character and, and system settings. Always be sure to do that. This was just moving out of beta. Do a UI change. Yeah, absolutely. UI change immediately after. Save, save, save. All right. So let's talk about the market. So over on Reddit, um, it was posted letting people buy from the servers on the market boards was a terrible idea. Uh, and I'm showing the thread. I like the first one. Give it time. Things will smooth out. So there is definitely some you know, uh, reason within the community understanding that no, this is actually by design. The fact that we can't sell on these worlds is the goal is to even out our, uh, our economies to, to smooth it all out so that eventually all... The OCPs actually addressed this um, since this, since these guys were talking. And um, he has talked about how his goal was to build a bigger, broader market board to let things level out. Um, it do, it's not about the handful of people that are making more money. It's about the total player population, um, more people, more sellers, more buyers. But, but basically the system as it sits and the system as it sits going into data center visit is more bound by this is what the servers are capable of and less is this like their dream scenario. Well, Mark, you can buy and sell from anywhere and eventually all it's going to be is just one market as a part of the data center. But the best way for the smoothest way, because Chris said like, yeah, they could have just turned it on, let you sell, you know, as well. They could have just not have those restrictions. And it would have probably been, you know, like two weeks of like just the market is just going nuts and things, you know, nobody knows what the value is of, of anything anymore is. Uh, and then that would have been, and then eventually it would have been, it would have settled down. I think that would have been the, the, the hardest pain point. I think what they have here is I like. I would have just laughed. <laughs> it's, it's fine. Gil still doesn't matter. So like first and foremost, keep that in mind. Gil mm. doesn't matter in this game. Um, there is no end game use for Gil. There isn't. There, it's just a scoreboard. So just seeing how high you can run it. So the first thing you want to do when you look at this is you want to understand what Gil means. Mm -hmm. So currency is the use of, it's, it's, it's a bartering middle step for goods and services. So that if you want to trade, 
an item, I don't have to have an item you want. It's that middle step. I'll give you money and then you can go spend that money with someone else. That's all Gil is. And so if on my server, a cordial sells for a thousand Gil and a 380 piece of gear sells for a hundred thousand Gil, then if I have a hundred cordials, I can get a piece of 380 gear. If on your server, both of those prices are half that, then your gill actually still has the same value. You just have less money in your wallet. So it doesn't matter because you're still going to use that money to either buy the cordials or buy the gear. And it still adds up to the same amount. It, it doesn't matter. What cross world does is it starts to say, now there's an exchange rate. Now, now all of a sudden you do want to pay attention to what the dollar is and what the Euro is. Mm -hmm because it is possible that I can go buy my cordials on Gilgamesh and I can go buy my 380 gear on Genova and I can actually come home with some money to spare. Uh, and so that's that's really the difference. That's but we don't. Back in 2019, we thought this was the new way of doing things or would it be potentially, um, but we don't. Like most people buy most purchases without checking other boards. They buy their raid consumables, um, they check the mini pet prices and they just check on one server. There's been a handful of people who have tried to make like websites and stuff, but a lot of that is being fueled with either add-ons or um, bot style mobile accounts doing the price scanning. And so at some element, there is a terms of service breach there. And so many of those websites have struggled to remain open um, because there is an inherent terms of service breach to get their information. Um, but we don't, we don't jump around we don't jump to um other servers and so i don't see how data centers is going to change this uh, but it's interesting to look back and see this problem in 2019 and that this is these are many of the exact same concerns and that my feelings largely align with 2019's me about i i don't see that i have more years of experience with world visit than these guys did who world visit i think had gone live that morning um, and so they've hopped around for a couple of minutes and read a Reddit post and are now posting their opinions, their 22 minutes of opinion. Uh, and so I, I struggle to see how this is any different, but a lot of the, con the concerns are still there. I still feel, feel that Gil doesn't really matter, but in the concept of let's for a second say that Gil is your objective, how does this affect it? And the answer is long-term it doesn't. It causes some minor leveling out and things like the fat cat or something like that in an amount that can be immense value um, or in like large quantities of materia being purchased. But for somebody just going to buy enough raid consumables to raid Savage in a few minutes, they're just going to pay whatever their server is and move on. That's all that's happening here. Yeah. And so for people yeah. who I would actually recommend should go to the Limsa and take advantage of the market itself because this is the opportunity where you can engage the only risk the only people who stay in a risk of actually losing are people who speculate wrong on prices yes. but you can literally go from world to world find you know things that you can either you know the goal is to to buy low and sell high so if something is selling at a lot at a high price on your server and you can go find it very cheaply on another server go buy that and then come and sell that back on your server and you'll make the money and you are basically being kind of you're you're being rewarded for your time in making that connection and making that that search and then going from there and what happens though is because the reason they won't let you sell on other servers is that you are taking your money that you made on your server and you're actually infusing it into the server that you are buying from so somebody on that server is getting the money and over time it turns out it's actually just because retainers don't work on other servers, but it is a nice idea that you are investing in a local economy, kind of like how tourism works, right? You take your money from where you live and you inject it into somebody else's economy at a rate that they agreed to exchange. So they're like, well, you're making money off me. You set the price. You told me that you wanted 410,000. And so I paid you what you asked and then I sold it for 699, which means they paid me what I asked. You got, you set the initial price. So you are like, well, I got screwed out of 280,000. No, you did not. You decided at 616 that you were good for that price. And then this person decided at 625 that they were good for that much higher price. You're gonna to start to see the, the, the imbalance that, that has in the existing economies with Gil. Maybe one server's got 
you know, like a, you know, a billion billion gill, and the other one only is coming at, at like, a, you know, a 100 million gill, there's a huge disparity. So what happens is that you can say, hey, I can go buy this stuff up really cheap because it is, there isn't a lot of money, so prices are low here, and then I can take it here and I can make more money, but now I'm taking money from this server and I'm infusing it into the server. There's not a lot of gill, and over time, that's gonna end up balancing out, and then over time, and they're going to be able to then say, okay, let's go ahead. Now that these things are more even, that there's a better guild distribution, now buying and selling wherever, it doesn't necessarily matter because it's all one take, world. Right. And if you want to take full advantage, you want to create a character on every server on your mm -hmm. data center and level them up to the point that you have retainers. And you want to do that with a friend because the way you would have to transfer items is Brian and I would go level up characters on... Genova was the highest price on Aether just based on the items I looked at today. Mm -hmm. So Brian and I would want to log in right now, go start new characters, get our little sprout symbol, and go crank those up and get retainers. And then... What Genova's still really high priced for Aether, by the way. What I could do is I can literally carry gill, items, whatever value I have established on my main, I can carry it to Genova. I can trade it to Brian's alt. Brian can then trade it to my alt, and now my alt has it. But it takes that middle step. Yeah, so you need a middle man. Or you need free companies. Brian and I's alts could have free companies on every server, and then I could put it in a shared free company storage if we had like a house on every server. Um, it would be an immense amount of work. And so you would be paid for nothing, except that that nothing would be immense tedium. So it would be back to kind of like the same level of like play as housing savage sign clicking, um, you know, something like that. Jumping around in Limsa where like somebody walking by your computer screen would go, what are you doing? You're doing nothing. Uh, the act of changing servers would be taking up your playtime instead of being out flying around on a hippo or whatever you would be doing if that was not available. So the fact that people are being rewarded for doing this doesn't bother me at all. <laughs> uh, and then what we could do is while I'm logged on to my alt, Brian could switch back to his main, bring over whatever value he wants to bring, and I could return the favor. So if you had a friend, you, that'd how you, be how you take full advantage of this. But the thing I would tell you is if you just want to take advantage of it on your main, go shop around, but keep in mind on your server, don't just look at the prices, look at that history and make sure that the prices you're comparing to are real prices that things have actually been trading for that. Um, and then go nuts. But basically there's going to be winners and bigger winners for mm -hmm. most players because most people are either going to see their stuff sell for the price that they listed it for, which is good news, or they're actually going to go and make money doing this. Or maybe, their maybe their prices were listed a little outlandish for their server, but that's still low by data center standards. So they're going to make extra money. And the only people who are going to lose are going to be people like myself. I went off and spent around half a million gil this morning buying up a handful of items. I just picked an index of, of like 10 items that I thought might be interesting to track. And so I went off and visited all the servers, bought them up if they were like a certain ratio compared to my prices. So I was looking for them to be well below half. That way I saved myself a lot of margin. Um, and then I came back and actually- What a rookie. Half a million invested. In Shadowbringers, I was regularly going and dumping four to 10 million when I was doing flips like this. What a rookie. 500,000. That's a lazy Chris right there. I've already had stuff sell. I had an item I bought for 10,000 to sell for 40,000 this morning. <laughs> and depending on how much money you're willing to risk doing this, uh, like Calamari on my server is a, it's a minion, is selling for 2.8 million. Some of the servers I saw it as low as 2 million, and some of the servers I saw it as high as 5.5. So if you could buy it for 2 million and sell it for 5.5, you would take 2 million gil and make 3.5. So the ratio is definitely there. I just, first of all, don't have a character on the server that's at 5.5 to sell it. Second of all, <laughs> not willing to risk. Two million if I'm wrong. Mm -hmm. um, no, just, live a little, man. It works out fine. I promise. Substantial amount of change. <laughs> so hopefully that makes sense. Hopefully that causes everybody to just kind of chill out. It's just going to increase the number of buyers, and in the long term, it'll all level out. Yeah, it's going to be exciting to see. I am just unbelievably impressed with the smoothness that happened this morning. That I really hope that foundationally that continues. I love the speed of transferring worlds and I'm very much looking forward to running maps with the community um, because now we can say, hey, we're doing these maps, transfer to our world, and let's get this thing done. Chris, do you have any final thoughts about these patch notes or the world visit system that you haven't shared yet? Honestly, just seeing this launch so smoothly, seeing them do the data center migration so smoothly just gives me um, less nervousness. I mean, it's not immune to it about the expansion launch. 
Um, they do have- Oh, I have great news! Shadowbringers was such a smooth launch, man! And then I have bad news. Endwalker was a terrible launch. Uh, <laughs> And so, like, saying that, wow, World Visit was so smooth gives me confidence in Shadowbringers being a smooth launch. That's great. And then it was. It was. And that gives me confidence that Endwalker can be a smooth launch. And it was not. <laughs> I have the load, the stress test coming up, Brian. You talked about it in your last video. Yeah, and so they're going to announce, like, server announce. Like, hey, go to this world and go do this fate. And I am so thrilled they're doing that. It's really exciting to see because my hope is that even after this stress test, that they can kind of broadcast like things like, hey, go do this thing. Like this special thing is happening. That's my hope. That's my How hope. How cool would that be if they found a way to have a... So they didn't need to do stress testing on North America this time around because um, people like, but not limited to Asmongold did it for them. Uh, and so going into Endwalker, they said, we feel that there's been gold coin. plenty of stress. Oh, hey. Plenty of stress. I got a gold coin. Kind of like the nice, plenty dude. of support from Farmer That's Girl. That's a hundred silver coins. Gifting a sub to Durpool today. So many gifted subs. You also gifted one to Aiden and to Rianok and to Hatsuoken and to Lucky Archery and to My Big Bat uh, and to Pearly Lizard and to Destroyer and to Crystal Paladin and to Sour Cookie, and then we had Anarchy gifting a bunch of subs earlier, and several of you renewing, and a couple of first-time subs. So thank you guys. Events that required you to jump worlds. Yeah. To have seasonal events that, like, literally take you world to world. They could, they could do it and with, going forward. It's like, hey, by the way. Oh, bah, bah, bah. no. <laughs> oh, I was say, clicking gotta, too fast, to, and I just turned in my book for nothing. To... Oh, that is so heartbreaking. To, to finish this up. <laughs> oh, cool. I don't know. Could be neat. So I'm excited. I, I think it's a good time to be in the game. And I think it's it's a really exciting time to see all this stuff happening and that it's just going so well. I can't imagine the amount of work they put in to make it go this smooth. Absolutely. Well, that's it, guys. This has been awesome. Take advantage. Go make your money uh, and <laughs> and just have fun with it. I, I can't. I still I'm blown away by the speed of this. Like I thought it was going to be uh, anyway. It's just fast. It's super fast. So we'll keep you guys up to date on all things, uh, you know, Final Fantasy related news and opinion as well as some guides uh, <laughs> coming up here for Shadowbringers for Work the Game. My name is Brian. My name's Chris. Thanks so much for watching, and we'll see you next time. Take care. Oh man, and we had our outro screens. Do you guys remember these? Hey guys, it's me, Brian. Uh, thanks so much for watching this video. If you're new here, we hope you hit that subscribe button. Check us out. We talk a lot about video games and we hope to at least hear from you in the comments below. We also try to respond to our- Oh, some of those, like one of us was walking by in the background. Oh, such a delightful time. Um, this is great. This was, it was nice to go back and watch this. Um, yeah, it's- what a cool, what a cool way to look back. I remember World Visit being more problematic than it was. Um, I remember, you know, certain people having issues or, or the patch being big to download. And actually, like, maybe, like, I did, wasn't even that worried about Data Center Visit. And um, if anything, my fears should be even less. So I'm really excited. We're in the middle of 24-hour maintenance right now. So uh, we'll see. But if there is money to be made, go make your money. I think long term, with hindsight, I will tell you the majority of it will drop down to being just something that like content creators or RP events or uh, data centers helping fuel things like Baldesian Arsenal or Deliberum Savage or something like that will use. But that the majority of time will still be spent on your world, occasionally world visiting, and even less so data center visiting. So it's a cool thing to do. I'm glad it's there. I think it should just help kind of remove the handful of barriers for people that are looking for somebody like, oh, this one group has seven people that want to run Ultimate and I want to run with them and I can't. It just removes that. It doesn't really change the game unless you want it to. Kind of.